Grace to you and peace in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And welcome to Bethany United Methodist Church on this Transfiguration Sunday. Um, I pray that your heart is joined with mine and with the psalmist and that we can say together, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Uh, please stand and join me in our call to worship. The Holy One is our sovereign. Let us praise God's great and awesome name. Mighty ruler, lover of justice, you have established fairness among us. Our opening hymn is number 2103 in the faith we sing. That's the little black hymnal there in the pews. We have come at Christ's own bidding. Please remain standing and join me in the opening prayer. God of majesty, mystery, and might, you have blessed us with revelations of your glory. 
Give us the gifts of faith, eyes to see your work in our lives, ears that hear your voice of ourselves, calling us to do your ministries of love, forgiveness and justice for everyone. Let us see Jesus Christ revealed in our midst, in unity one another, that we may show your love embodied in Jesus to the whole world. Amen. be seated. Our prayer for illumination today is God of our light, make us attentive to your word as to a lamp shining in a dark place. Fill us with your truth that we live, may live faithful lives until that great day dawns and the morning star rises in our hearts. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament lesson today is from Exodus, chapter 24, verses 1 to 18. The Lord said to Moses, come up to me on the mountain and wait there, and I will give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandments, which I have written for your instruction. So Moses set out with his servant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountain of God. To the elders he had said, Wait here for us until we come to you again, for Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute may go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord settled on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it for six days. On the seventh day, he called to Moses out of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain in the sight of the people of Israel. Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. Moses was on the mountain for 40 days and 40 nights. The epistle lesson uh, from the New Testament is from Second Peter. Let me see if I can move it faster. <laughs> okay. There we go. Okay, it's uh, chapter 1, verses 16 to 21. For we did not follow closely, sorry, for we did not follow cleverly the wise myths when we made known to you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we had been eyewitnesses of his majesty. For he received honor and glory from God the Father when that voice was conveyed to him by the majestic glory, saying, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So, we have the prophet, prophetic message more fully confirmed. You will do well to be attentive to this 
Esther a lamp shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. First of all, you must understand this, that no prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation because no prophecy ever came by human will, but men and women moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks Thank be to God. the gospel, which is found in Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9. 
Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John and led them up a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly there appeared to them Moses and Elijah talking with him. Then Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will make three dwellings here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, suddenly a bright cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud a voice said, This is my son, the beloved. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell to the ground and were overcome by fear. But Jesus came and touched them, saying, Get up and do not be afraid. And when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus ordered them, Tell no one about the vision until after the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Pray with me, please. God of love, grant that as we hear your word proclaimed, we may be moved from our fixed understandings and listen to Jesus. Transform us by the power of your love revealed in Jesus the Christ. Amen. Okay, for the past three weeks, we've been listening to Jesus preach the Sermon on the Mount. And each week, I've asked you all to imagine yourselves there on the mountain with Jesus, listening as he interprets the ancient texts in new and radical ways, listening as Jesus proclaims what the fulfillment of the law looks like. Now with today's text, we've jumped over a good bit of Jesus' ministry and we begin the text with a time stamp, six days later. Well, later than what? Several pivotal moments in Jesus' ministry, but one in particular for Peter, just before his transfiguration, Jesus and his disciples were in Caesarea Philippi. It was there that Jesus asked Peter, but who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter declared, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. A shining moment of clarity for Peter, for sure, but very quickly after that, when Jesus explained to all the disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and be killed and on the third day be raised, Peter said, God forbid it, Lord. And Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan. Being a disciple of Jesus comes with high highs and low lows. And so Jesus explained to all his disciples, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. We don't usually use that particular scripture when we invite people into Christian community, but maybe we should. We will all suffer losses. We will fall into sinful thinking just as Peter did. We all have our crosses to bear. And the good news is that 
We will have the strength of the Holy Spirit to carry us through, to companion us as we go. We can call out to God for assistance and we will receive it. Now, the assistance we receive may not be exactly the way we expected it to be, but we never go through life alone, even when we're alone. Now, we don't know for sure why Jesus decided to take only Simon Peter and James and John, but he did. He took those three disciples. Maybe they were the ones that he felt were capable of seeing what they were about to see and then being quiet about it, not sharing it until the right moment. But Jesus gathered those three of his disciples and they went up the mountain together. Now, imagine yourself as one of those three, one of the disciples, and you're going up the mountain with Jesus and already you've seen Jesus do amazing things. The, the healings, the transformations that have happened in people. Then they've heard him tell some of the parables and they've been confused by what they've heard. And then there, in that moment on the mountain, apparently with no prelude, no word from Jesus saying, brace yourselves, Jesus is transfigured before their eyes. Jesus was luminous like the sun. The veil of his outward human appearance had been removed and they saw Jesus in the light of his truth, transfigured before their eyes. His full son of Godness revealed. Can we even imagine it? How would we react? If you're there, how? How do we react? Like the shepherds in the field when the angels sang the pronouncement that the Messiah had been born, kneeling in fright? Or like the Magi, kneeling in awe and adoration of the newborn king. Might we be stunned into the stillness of statues as apparently Peter and James and John were? Could our minds even make sense of what we were seeing? I've tried to put myself in Peter's place. I'm not Peter, but I can imagine myself staring transfixed as Jesus' glory is revealed. My teacher, this man that I know well, whom I've been following for months, who has drawn me into an ever deepening understanding of the ancient teachings, a deepening love for God, and then here is another revelation. What do you do? What do you say? And as I imagine it, I'm staring at Jesus and then Moses and Elijah appear, the representatives of the law and the prophets, and they start to have a conversation with Jesus. and. I'm speechless, but, I, but my brain is going really fast. You know, we have an autopilot in our brain. When something is so phenomenal or so terrifying or so awesome that we can't actually think, autopilot kicks in. And I can just imagine the autopilot kicking in and scanning for the possible appropriate reactions 
to this vision and he reverts to the ways that his people have historically marked momentous occasions. And so he interrupts this holy moment, yes, with his zeal, his passion, and his great love for Jesus, he interrupts this holy moment and blurts out, I know, let's build a shrine. Now mere mortals might have turned to Peter and said, not the moment, dude. And I can just imagine Jesus looking tenderly at Peter in that moment with love and forgiveness and thinking, oh, Peter, that is so you. But then the text continues, while Peter was still speaking. Peter has interrupted the holy moment and the Lord God interrupts Peter. And he says, this is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. God says, don't just do something. Don't just say something. Listen to Jesus. This is my son. Listen to him. Follow him. Learn from him. And do you notice that it wasn't until they heard God's voice that they actually fell to the ground in fear. Can you feel that? Can you imagine hearing God's voice in such a way that it makes your legs go weak and you fall to the ground and cover your head because God is too much. Well, the next thing the disciples know, Jesus touches them and tells them not to be afraid because there are a lot of scary things that happen. And we are always told, don't be afraid. And when they open their eyes, the mountain is just the mountain. And Jesus is just Jesus. The holy moment has passed. But Peter, James, and John have been transformed by their experience. The way they know Jesus now is completely different from the way they knew him before. Peter has already proclaimed that Jesus is the son of the living God, but now he has seen Jesus' divinity with his own eyes and all three of them have heard God's proclamation that Jesus is the Son, the Beloved. And as they go back down the mountain, Jesus authorizes them to share what they've seen and experienced, but only after his resurrection. He will be sending them forth in mission to tell the world what they now know. But for now, and until his resurrection, they have to keep their experience to themselves. And as I read and reread this text, I was struck by the way our worship service each Sunday tries to evoke what we see here. We are called by God, called by the Holy Spirit to gather in this place and worship God. We hear the word proclaimed, Jesus is 
the Son of God, the Beloved. We respond to God's call on our lives. We listen to Jesus who said, get up and do not be afraid. Rise up and follow Jesus. Don't just worship, act on what you've heard and what you've proclaimed. And then we are sent forth from this place out into the world in the sure and certain knowledge that Jesus is the Lord, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And because Christ has risen, we are empowered to share that message and proclaim that truth openly. Our Old Testament text tells a similar story of God inviting Moses to come up to me on the mountain. And the glory of the Lord rested upon the mountain and engulfed Moses. To Moses, from his perspective, it was an enveloping cloud. But to the people waiting on the plains below, God's glory appeared as a devouring, consuming fire. And so while Moses stayed in God's presence and received God's holy commandments, the people were reverting to their old idolatrous ways making a God of gold for them to worship. And that's what our idols are. They are little G gods that we can see and hold on to and use and manipulate our loved ones, maybe, our friends, our homes, our stuff, our money. We are in control of all of that or at least we like to think we are, but the Lord God, the holy mystery, the three one God, we can do nothing but fall to our knees in wonder and awe and thanksgiving. Well, there's one more thing we can do. We, the one thing God commanded us to do, we can listen to Jesus. We can let his teaching transform our lives. We can surrender our little G gods and let go of all that's now in the past. We can pray and praise and serve the Lord our God whose all-encompassing love is revealed in Jesus, our God who is love, who is always and everywhere and in everyone doing a new thing. <clears throat> Jesus allowed his closest disciples to see him transfigured, his divine self revealed and confirmed. Now, when we come to know Jesus as Lord, <coughs> excuse me, we might simply stare transfixed. Or like Peter, we might automatically repeat what has worked in the past. But as United Methodists, our stated mission is to make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And brothers and sisters, we can't do that if we ourselves are not willing to be transformed. We must always be of a mind that can be continually transformed, renewed, and revitalized in faith so that we may be sent by God to transform the world with the love of Jesus Christ. 
In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, all God's people say. Our hymn of response, oh, this is a fun one. Number 404, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. hymnals to our affirmation of faith found at 884, the statement of faith of the Korean Methodist Church. We believe in the one God, creator and sustainer of all things, father of all nations, the source of all goodness and beauty, all truth and love. We believe in Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, our teacher, example, and redeemer, the savior of the world. We believe in the Holy Spirit, God present with us for guidance, for comfort, and for strength. We believe in the forgiveness of sins, and in the life of love and prayer, and in grace equal to every We believe in the word of God, contained in the Old and New Testaments as a sufficient rule both of faith and of practice. We believe in the Church, those who are united in the living Lord for the purpose of worship and service. We believe in the reign of God and in the God who realizes the human society and in the family of God where we are all brothers and sisters. We believe in the final triumph of righteousness and in the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Fear not, that's a tickle in my throat. Not, not you know, not COVID. <coughs> um, we come now to a time of sharing our joys and concerns. Um, I will share with you that many of you know that my daughter is on the cruise of a lifetime and this week she has been in the Holy Land. And so I got a picture of her standing on Mount Nebo where Moses stood uh, to look at the promised land. And then I got a picture of her covered in mud by the Dead Sea. <laughs> so, you know, sublime, ridiculous. but. Um, it, it is a joy for me that she is having this experience, and I am I am sharing it vicariously with her. Are there? Um, I know that there are 
other joys and concerns that we want to lift up. Yes, um, well, I thank God for the ministry for this church. I didn't know it was Catholic. It, I, I read and read it was the, about the lentil. Is it, is it, well, it, it's Methodist. Yeah. But sim it, one concern I, I was um, well concerned about the, uh, the church down, down the street. I'm trying to find a job. I'm trying to find, uh, uh, well, I, I, knew, I need identification because I'm a traveling evangelist. So, and the Lord visited me in, in Washington in about three months. Jesus came here to earth and revealed himself. He was with an African woman. And he said, you see? And I, so I seen God. Abraham, I mean, Moses said, I want to see your face. I want to see, you can't see me and live. I'll show you my back parts. I'll put you in the cliff of the rock and I'll pass by and you only see my back. He could not see. Now we can see God's back parts. Now, what God back parts is, is his presence. The Bible says uh, in Psalms 100, um, um, to uh, enter into his presence, with singing, so, so when you sing, well, well, first of all, we have to have uh, be saved because they have the spirit of God. God responds to those that have His spirit. He, um, uh, if we don't have the spirit of God, we can't worship. We can praise, as it says, "Let everything that have breath praise the Lord." So you don't have to be saved to praise, but to worship, you have to have God's spirit and and believe. Uh, whoever confessed that Jesus is the Son of God. It says in First John four, God abides in him, and he in God. First John four and thirteen it says, um, and we know that he abides in us because he has given us of his spirit. So to worship God, we must be saved, believe in Jesus Christ, that he has come in the flesh, that he is the Son of God. Then God gives us his spirit. And so, do you, do you have a concern you want to share or a joy that that you need ID and you need a job? Yes, I, okay. I need job. Um, okay, thank job. you. Thank you, Anthony. Anybody else? I have a joy. My baby brother, uh, his birthday today, 54 years old. <laughs> 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 Makes me feel a little bit older. <laughs> He's really the baby. He's really okay. the baby. <laughs> Mike's not on. Okay. Okay, so if y'all didn't hear that from the back, April is asking for prayers for the family of Mr. Frank, her bowling coach who passed away earlier this week. Are there others? Yes. Two. <laughs> Thank you, Gerhard. That was in record time. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, I'd like to lift up the family of Jean Stutz, whom we laid to rest yesterday. Uh, this is Kathy's aunt and um, their family, and uh, just hold them in their prayers during this time of transition. You can probably hear me. Okay. <laughs> Let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, we are in awe that you 
Don't just invite us into your presence. You long for us to call upon you, to rely on you, to love you. You long for us to share with you our needs, our concerns, our fears, our gratitude, our hope, and our love. Lord, we pray for those we have lifted up. We pray for people who are suffering. We pray especially for the people of Ukraine as the war ramps up again. We pray especially for the people of Turkey and Syria, thousands of families, individuals crushed in the earthquake, thousands more grieving, unsure of their loved one's final moments or if their loved one might be alive somewhere. We pray for rescue workers, first responders all around the world. The ones that we have here in Durham who arrive at a moment's notice, not, not knowing exactly what they'll find, prepared to help in every way possible. We pray for those who are lost, who believe in their own heart or mind that they are unworthy of your love when we know different. We pray for those who are facing difficult medical procedures and treatments and challenges to their body and their spirit. And we pray for their caregivers who are helpless to fix anything. We pray for all those who are unemployed or unemployed, that they may find meaningful work to do that will allow them to have their daily bread. We pray for this family of the United Methodist Church, this Bethany family, that we may show your love to one another and share in your forgiveness and mercy. We pray with gratitude for the many ways that you have blessed us and continue to bless us. But chief among them all, Lord, we give you thanks for your son, our savior, Jesus Christ, who was given to us for our salvation. And with the saints who have gone before us and those who are worshiping today and those who will come after us, we pray with the disciples, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Trusting in God's steadfast love, let us confess our sin. Glorious God, you lovingly create rainbows and puddles, snowstorms and blue skies. 
We confess our blindness to the light you have placed in all that you have created. We confess that we are too busy to notice your glory or listen for your voice. We confess the fear we feel as our old familiar ways fade away as they must, so that you may give birth to the new things we cannot yet perceive. We are quick to give voice to our pain and resentment, slow to see your face in those with whom we disagree. We see Jesus transfigured. We stare transfixed. But we close our hearts to your transforming grace. Light of the world, forgive us, we pray. Open our eyes to your mercies, which are new every day. Grant us courage to embrace the new things you would do in our midst. Transform us, heart, mind, body, and soul, that we may live in the light of your love. Brothers and sisters, do not be afraid. The light of the world has come among us. Rejoice in Jesus Christ. God has forgiven our sins and calls us beloved. The peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. I invite you now as a response to all that you have heard proclaimed, I invite you to share your blessings with the Lord your God.
give you thanks for the many ways that you have blessed us and sustained us. We pray that these, our gifts and your tithes will be used in service to transform the world by your love, your justice, and your peace. We ask these things in the powerful name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 664, sent forth by God's blessing. and peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit rest upon you and abide within you this day and every day. And may you go forth from this place filled with the love of God to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen.